One of the all-time most prolific songwriting duos in the history of soul was Ashford and Simpson, who put out just an album a year between 1971 and 1986. Well, the first two were Valerie Simpson solo with um, her husband backing her up, but from 1973 to 1986, they were sharing the billing singing and harmonizing together and writing most of the material together. And from their third album as a duo, the 1976 release Come As You Are, the ballad Somebody Told a Lie. Somebody told a lie, said heaven was in the sky. Throw it out the window, says I. Already I'm hearing hearing some like wah-wah in here, although um, the credits on Discogs list Eric Gale on a different track and list Hugh McCracken on a different track. So I am not quite getting the credits done for that. Or, I guess it is, uh, I guess it is Eric Gale, yeah. I mean, so to speak, if happiness is what you seek, first you'd better realize you're walking down the wrong street, cause I some really lush backing here. For a minute, I thought I was almost hearing a Mellotron, but no. No, I'm hearing strings. I am hearing the arrangements of William Eaton with um, horns by George Young, strings arranged by Walter Rain. Not familiar names to me, i got to admit. Um, Walter Rehm, 136 credits according to Discogs. Um, and, uh, yeah, actually, uh, yeah, so far, um, of the, this list of credits, I recognize, aside from Ashford and Simpson, I recognize Eric Gale, who put out an album around this time, Ginseng Woman, and um, Don Grolnick, Richard T. on keyboards, percussion by Ralph McDonald, and, and these guys are listed, listed on all the tracks, so we'll hear them um, if we haven't heard them already. Steve Gadd on drums, Francesco Centeno on bass. Yeah. If you can't get to this, Walter Rain, that solo right there, for lack of, um, it just says horns. Um, and 
I, I like how before the chorus, the track starts to take on a different rhythmic structure and almost becomes like a mid-tempo, kind of, um, almost takes on kind of a 60s flavor in a way. Um, kind of a, a slight, a slight Stax, Stax Vault type of character, late 60s I'm thinking. And then b before before it, it retreats back to the balladry of the, the lush chorus. <laughs> pretty major seventh chords in there, basically going from like C to G right there in that passage. It turns out this Walter Rain fellow hadn't really done a lot of soul music. Um, he was doing more M.O.R. during the 60s, and um, the most familiar names in his back catalog, well, he, he did the 1964 Louis Armstrong album, assuming the, the one with the big, big, big hit of that year, the one that knocked the Beatles off number one, and then Peter, Paul, and Mary, and Spanky and Our Gang. To give you more of an idea of the background he came from. So, um, that might account for the, the rather unique string arrangement. It's something that we haven't really heard heard in this, in this genre much. <laughs> That saxophone is emphasizing the major sevenths. Like the chords, the chord is in C, duh, duh, but that, that, that sax keeps hitting B. Listen to the way they're harmonizing. The, the, the way that his voice was just fluttering behind hers as she started to sing lyrics. They were holding on that note for so long. I, I, I think it was like uninterrupted that whole time. It, and they've both got quite a, a vocal range. It's like he can do the mid range, but he can also go up into that Philip Bailey like like area. And then the way that she like sings all those notes and kind of flutters around. It's... <laughs> Um, F major seventh. That's like the the main chord that that you first hear in the song.
pure atmosphere, and I just love it. The way those those beautiful chords, like F uh, major seventh to like E major seventh or, or E seven, na na la, like, and then um, you know, embellished by those strings, and then and then the voices, which are at this point are just filigree, the the way they're just like weaving it. Yeah, there you have it. Somebody Told a Lie by Ashford and Simpson um, from their 1976 album Come As You Are. One of the most beautiful songs in their catalog. Like they, they have a lot of a lot of great songs, but that, that one leaps out like like few others. And it's like a combination of many things. It's got beautiful chord structure, it's got great vocal interplay, a very memorable vocal melody on the chorus, um, understated guitar work of uh, Eric Gale, um, a beautiful sax solo that emphasizes the, the major seven notes, the, the pretty notes, the, you know, the, um, the, you know, the, ma the major seventh chord is the chord that, that kind of, um, since the, the, um, the octave of the tonic is dropped half a step, it gives the overall feel of the chord kind of that slanted eyelash, kind of almost kind of a, a bedroomy, pretty sound, um, and uh, yeah, it's kind of it's basically like like the bedroom eye of chordal the bedroom of chordal structures, and um, unique arrangements that I guess are are, are a bit more like M.O.R. pop than, than Philly. I, I'm talking about the string, since g given the background of, of the person responsible f for those string arrangements. And um, interesting lyrics that um, uh, somebody told a lie, said heaven was in the sky, throw it out the window, says I, I mean so to speak, if happiness is what you seek, first you'd better realize you're walking down the wrong street because I found it and it's deep inside and I want to take you there, want to take you there in my arms, baby, be there instantly. Um, if you can get to this, I'm not saying it don't exist. It's just a difference of opinion where some will, some won't pay the fare. Somebody told a lie, said heaven was in the sky. Huh. So basically, Heaven only really exists if you truly believe in it. And, um, uh, basically that you've got to um, be willing to work for your own happiness and, and uh, make the right choices um, to get where you want to be. Anyway, yeah, a great singer-songwriter team and vocal who had a lot of success during the 70s and 80s as songwriters, but their career as recording artists deserves equal, if not more, attention. I mean, an amazing tally of albums. Back, back in the days when artists put out an album a year, because ideas came more easily back in those days because modern music pop, rock, and soul were in the midst of their creative cycle. A creative cycle that would be pretty much exhausted by the late 80s, but that's a different story. For more rubies and sapphires from the catalog of Ashford and Simpson, see the directory of albums by American soul artists linked in the description below. And like and subscribe and follow me on social media, all linked in the description below to know when the next video is coming out. And until next time, this is Aragon, the world's most ear travel tri-maximalist, signing off.